Hallelujah. How is everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. Everyone turn to your neighbor, don't forget. You have the power to choose. Choose righteousness or unrighteousness. Choose joy or miserable. <laughs> Choose submission or rebellion. <laughs> Choose life or choose death. Well, you got the power to choose, man. Use it. Praise God. Of course, if you don't live out of the word of God, you ain't going to make right choices. Turn to Ephesians 6, please. Ephesians chapter 6. It's right after Ephesians 5. Glory. Ephesians 6, uh, you know. Oh, thank you. Ephesians 6.10. Is everybody there? Amen. Praise God. Three of you are there. I'm glad. <laughs> Let's speak it. Finally. Everyone say finally. finally. Hallelujah. That's kind of like a release. Finally, you know, you got it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not your own. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. There it is. You can all go home now. <laughs> Verse 12. For we do not what? Wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. In where? Heavenly, Heavenly places, which means unseen. Amen. Okay, in other words, you are fighting demonic forces. How many people quit forgetting that? Amen. Second Corinthians 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. And verse 3, is everybody there? Amen. For though we walk in the physical realm, amen, amen. which is called the flesh here, but they should say physical realm, we do not war according to the physical realm, which is known as the flesh. See, people get this confused sometimes. He's not talking about the works of the flesh. He's talking about physical arena, natural realm. So even though we walk in this realm, we don't fight according to this realm. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Now, he explains the flesh, doesn't he? The carnal realm. But they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now, remember that a stronghold is a memory lie. That memory lie comes from a voice. Now, a demon can use a person's voice to put a stronghold on you. But majority of the time, it's just a thought, which is a voice, it brings a stronghold on you. And what it is, it is a lie that people accept. When they accept that lie, it brings a label on them. And it also opens the door to a devil. Now, these are in your thoughts. Does everybody get it? They're in your thoughts. Every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence, whether it's good or evil. Okay, let's go a little further. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down these strongholds, memory lies, casting down what? Arguments. arguments. Were those arguments in your feet? No. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God or the word of God. Bringing every thought what? Into captivity. Grabbing them. Looking at them. Examining them. Is this of you, Lord, or is it of evil? G bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, to the obedience of the truth. 
and being ready to punish all disobedience. Well, how are you going to punish it? You're going to get rid of it. You're going to sever emotional attachments. You're going to command it because, uh, look, it This says you know them by their fruit, the, the demons, right? So whatever spirit is speaking to you, whatever he's enticing you, there's a spirit behind that. So if he's lying to you and you start lying, you got a spirit of lying. It's real simple. Whether it's lust, whether it's deception, whatever it may be. It says, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, you can't punish something until you're submissive. Does everybody get this? Amen. So your fight and my fight is not against one another. It's against the unseen realm of voices. These voices speak to you. There's one voice. That's why the word talks about fiery darts. These fiery darts, it says, lit, put on the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart. Why? It's a part of the full armor of God. Those fiery darts are voices. Does everybody understand that? They're voices of evil. They're voices of deception. They're voices that promote strongholds, memory lies, and put people in the captivity in their thoughts. To serve what? To serve darkness. To serve the devil. And what it does is it brings blindness on a person. And let me tell you another thing it does. It disconnects you from the Father. People don't realize that. Why? You lose relationship. Because if there's true relationship, there's conviction that follows that. If there's not conviction, then there is no relationship. 2 Timothy chapter 3. You and I were rescued. Amen? Why were we rescued? To rescue others. Amen? But the one thing is, is we got to get emptied of the world so that Jesus can take possession. Amen? Amen? In verse 1, but know this, that in the last days. Are we in the last days? Amen. See, when he says, but know this, he's trying to say, hey, listen. I've got some vital information for you. Vital. This is important. This is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get our attention. I have vital information. There's something that's going to occur in the last days that is going to begin to wipe out my people. And we are in the last days. He said that in the last days, perilous times will come. Very, very difficult. Very deceptive. He says, for men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Unloving. Even though they say they love, but they really don't. Unforgiving. Slanders without self-control or control over the old man, self. Brutal, despisers of what is good. Traitors, you never know when they're going to turn on you. Amen. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than what? Lovers of God. Oh, they have a form of godliness. They can pray in the spirit. They can dance. They can worship. They have a form of godliness. They can even quote scripture, but they don't live out of it. But they deny the power. And from such people turn away. Or slap the hell out of them and make room for heaven. For this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women loaded down with sins, led away by what? Various lusts. Now remember the word lust. People think it's sexual all the time. Lust means an overwhelming desire. So they love to put an overwhelming desire in you for something. Why? So you move out of God's time. You move out of God's will. Amen? Amen. Always learning. They're always learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth or they're never able to come to the place of denying themselves. This is a spirit. 
It is the spirit that's infiltrated the body of Christ. It's the spirit right now that is all over the world. Narcissism. That's what the spirit is. Perilous times. Need your attention. Vital information in the last days. Very difficult influence will draw individuals into the snare of the devil that will take the soul of individuals into captivity, which means their mind, their will, their emotions, their desires, their imaginations. It will put them in a deep state of dark deception, blindness, and selfishness. The love of self, of course, me first. Remember we talked about it's, it's associated with it's, the selfie generation is because of the spirit. It's a me, me, me. It's a false entitlement. I deserve this. Heck with God. They put God on the back burner and do whatever they want. This is influence of evil. It's narcissism. It's a spirit. It has caused much division in the body of Christ. People are being moved out from fulfilling the will of God. And people are dying because of the spirit. The love of self, the love of me and money will cause people to deny truth, God, and their true identity. The spirit is a demon called narcissism. The word about the meaning of the spirit is it's excessive or erotic interest in oneself or physical appearance. Extreme selfishness, egotism, self-admiration, vanity, love of self, conceit, and selfish entitlements. That's associated with the selfie and me, the me, me generation. It's controlled by the spirit. It's not able to come to the truth. It learns, learns, learns. But because it can't deny itself, it can't come to the place of truth. So everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. Again, what does it mean? It's excessive or erotic interest of oneself in physical appearance, extreme selfishness, egotism, self-admiration, vanity, conceit, selfish entitlements. It doesn't allow individuals to come to the knowledge of the truth because they can't deny themselves. Individuals, because we, there is a, and I'm telling you this is Globally. This is globally. We, our society has moved into an, an emotional society, not a tr society of truth anymore. People are living out of the soul of the emotion and not out of truth. It is incredible what is happening. People are easily offended now. You think about offense. People are offended all over the news media, everywhere. People are getting offended. Why? Because of the influence of this spirit. It's incredible to me. In Luke 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no more endurance. There's no waiting on the Lord. It's I want it and I want it now and I believe I'm entitled to it. Verse 25. And the problem is, is because many people do not have understanding. They haven't reached the place of understanding. Remember, the word says that light shines in darkness, and darkness has no understanding. So when darkness begins to infiltrate or invade an individual or a Christian... What it's going, it's going to do is, is take their understanding or twist it to promote self. It's no longer an understanding of what's my influence. It's no longer an understanding of God first. It's no longer an understanding of deny self. It's only an understanding of promote self, protect self, glorify self, and fulfill self. 
Is everybody okay? Now great, verse 25, now great multitudes went with Jesus and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. There's the challenge. You say you're a believer? Well, believers are supposed to be disciples. Here's the challenge. It doesn't mean you're going to go murder your parents or something like that. It means that God is number one compared to anything in your life. Anything. And whoever does not bear his cross or fight and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish, lest after he has laid the foundation is not able to finish, all who see him begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build but was not able to finish. You know why? Could not deny self. Remember, what is the perfect law? The perfect law of the spirit of life which brings freedom is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Fight for the life of Christ or run for your life of self. That's what happens. You're either going to fight for the life of Christ or you're going to run to fight for your life, the life of self. And you know what the end up of the life of self is? It's destructive. The only life of Christ is victorious in life. That's why it's called the life of Christ. Any other life will bring destruction. Demons are real. Mental influence is caused by evil presence. Confirmation. To rebel and fulfill self. Amen? Everybody got a little flicker. They'll say, yep. Matthew 8. Hallelujah. Matthew 8, 16. Hallelujah. Matthew 8, 16. Narcissism. It's a demonic spirit that has been released, unleashed from hell. And is invading and destroying individuals all over the world. It's backing itself up by technology. It's, in other words, it's invading through technology. In verse 16, when evening had come, they brought to Jesus many who were what? Demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Oh, believe me, you get tested when you say that. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Now when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves. But Jesus was asleep. Yeah, right. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're perishing. And he said to them, Why are you fearful, O oh, you little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And so the men marveled, saying, Who can this be? that even the winds and the sea obey him. <laughs> Praise God. 
He said, let the dead bury the dead. Leave it all. What? To be free so God can restore, not you and me. He will restore everything. We don't. Does everybody get it? People keep going to the Lord. Lord, restore this, restore this. He doesn't have to restore it. You don't even have to ask him. You just ask for his will. Lord, you fix whatever needs to be fixed. How do you know he's going to restore it? Maybe it's not his will for it to be restored. Amen? You're asking for something that may not be his will, but you're asking for it because it's out of your, an emotional attachment. Maybe God's got a whole nother course for you and you're refusing it and rejecting it. Amen? Amen. Oh, glory. He said, let the dead bury the dead. Leave it. But all, why? All to be free so that we can follow the Lord and let him restore and not us. There is a global shift of this influence by this spirit that has taken children, young adults, and adults as prisoners feeding off their emotions of bitterness, offense, rebellion, anger, and works of the flesh. Is it, now, I want you to understand something. This spirit has infiltrated so much and so powerful that it's now become a character of humanism. It's now become a character of humanism with false entitlements and choices. Even to the fate right now, look at Even to the fate where they're trying to eliminate birth of gender. Think about that. They're trying, these, these spirits are trying to bring an area of, of, of false entitlement and so much destruction to mankind that they're trying to deny that your birth of gender so that they're trying to give you transgender or make a choice of how you feel. So they're going to ask a five-year-old, I know you're a boy right now, you know. I mean, think about this. Remember the saying, Jack and Jill went up the hill? Amen? Well, Jack came down with a uh, skirt, and now they call him Jackie. <laughs> this is what's going on. Oh, hallelujah. Jill didn't recognize him and ran. <laughs> what happened to you, Jackie? Look at the entitlement. And I'm telling you, even the government was promoting it for eight years. Obama phone. Here, you're, you earned it. From the Obamanites. It was promoted. Self-entitlement. Even health care has a self-entitlement to it. How about immigration even has a self-entitlement to it? Now they're allowing people to vote with no ID. Self-entitlement. It could offend someone. I, I, does everybody get what's happening? I mean, it's plumb nuts. This emotional shift is global. And if, if people don't agree, they have temper tantrums. And then they lie. That's what narcissism is. It is a spirit. False entitlement. Me, myself, and I. That's the Trinity. First Peter chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, think about this. Hollywood. Hollywood movies actually are becoming realities these days. Amen? You know, the word says something powerful. It says, wide is the road to destruction. Amen? But narrow is the road to freedom. In other words, God has set boundaries. These are called boundaries. You and I were, when God rescued me and you, he set boundaries. He made them skinny. And when you earn trust, he begins to expand them. That's what rules and laws are placed, even in the kingdom. 
He, he, why? To protect us, keeping us in these boundaries. See, but people with a self-entitlement, false self-entitlement, they just step over the boundary. Um, I earned it. And let me tell you, you lose trust. And one thing you don't want to do is learn to tr lose the trust of the Lord. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 5. Is everybody there? Amen. Glory. In verse 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people. That means immature. He does not talk about age. Submit yourselves to your elders, those that are more mature. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. That means you can't submit without being humble, right? For God resists the proud. Say it, God resists the proud. God resists the proud. Wow. So this false entitlement by these spirits, narcissism, is always promoting pride. Always. It's okay. God knows your heart. You can do it. Just go ahead and do it. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't acknowledge the Lord. Don't worry about the rules. Don't Just go do it. And the devil snares. Boom. Brings bondage. Opens the door. The person gets a demon. You know why? Because pride always rejects conviction. Amen? Let me tell you. You don't think the Holy Spirit is trying to tell me and you before we do something that is out of order? Oh, yeah, every time, every time. But God gives grace. That's his plan. That's also the plan of escape to the what? Why? Because the humble are willing to hear, the pride are not. Therefore, do what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, that he may release a promise to you, a blessing in his time. No, they're saying, don't go out and get it yourself. You go out and get it yourself. I can't trust you. Because God's will is about God's time. Amen? He said, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. But Lord, this is what I want. He goes, I know what you want. Give it to me. Exchange it. I'm going to put it on the shelf when I see it's time and right. I'm going to release it to you. But if you go out of time, you're going to take care of it because I'm not going to. He said, be sober. Hello? Be alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Why? Because if you're not sober, if you're not consistent, the enemy's going to outwit you very easily. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. That means he's speaking. Seeking whom he may what? Devour. But he first has to deceive you. Then he, look at he eats you up bit by bit. By bit, so you started right where you fell from. It says, resist him in the faith or in the truth, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Everybody gets tempted the same way. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you suffered a while. In other words, that suffering is associated with enduring. It doesn't mean you're going to, you know... Suffer like being crucified or shot down or whatever. It means you're enduring. That suffering is associated with enduring. You've got to endure. What are you enduring? Denying yourself, waiting on the Lord, denying yourself, not going to moving ahead of God. Oh, and after you've suffered, <laughs> praise God. The sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood, right? <laughs> so we're all doing it. And after you have suffered a while, perfect. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So why? You learn. But if you don't learn, you're going to go through that cycle again. And you hope that you're going to go through that cycle because you may be taken out next time you enter that cycle. I always look at it in the arena. Look, at when I was out there using dope, every time I put a needle on my arm or a hit in my mouth or whatever it was, I was taking a chance of death every time. Every time. That's how demonic forces are. 
every time I took a chance of dying and going to hell. Every time. You never knew what you were getting ready to put in your body. You never knew what somebody might have put in that shot, that liquor, that drink. You never knew. So how can we even consider going back? How can we even consider the area, the area of rebelling towards God or moving out of God's time? How can we even consider it? That's deception. That's lack of relationship. That's number one is lack of prayer. It's a person that does not pray. Because without contact, you won't have victory. Here it says, submit to God to resist the devil, right? Well, if you're not praying and connecting, you're not submitting to God. God gets put on the back burner while self is put on the front burner. So we have here the will of self before the will of God. Amen? Amen. Galatians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. But I deserve this. I earn this. It's amazing when we got in front of the judge, I don't deserve this. <laughs> It wasn't me. Have mercy on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 16, Galatians 5, 16. You know, people don't realize that they may get them. Things happen even years down the road. Amen? Because of the intent prior to it that they made a commitment to. And it continues on. Years down the road. It's like buying the wrong car or marrying the wrong person. Amen? Years down the road. It's amazing how we coordinate buying the wrong car or marrying the wrong person. I remember. Anyways. Some of them are beautiful outside, but inside they run terrible. <laughs> they need an inner healing, need an inner deliverance. Verse 16, I say, then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The spirit promotes that arena of flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you desire or you wish. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of death. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, in other words, self-entitlement. Fornication, self-entitlement. Uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why God places us under guardians. The word talks about in um, Ephesians 4 that there's pastors, evangelists, and so forth for the training, the equipping of the body of Christ. You know, when I, when I got saved, the Lord put me under a mentor. The Holy Spirit was the first mentor. And then he put me around people where I was accountable to. Elders, older, mature. When I had questions or whatever it was, I, besides being in my word, I was submissive to them. I respected them. I respected what they said. I didn't do anything unless I got confirmation. I didn't come home and ask my wife, hey, I need this. I didn't ask her for nothing. I didn't deserve anything. I still don't deserve anything. Everything that he gives me is a gift. But when you begin to get in that place where you're looking at him, is everything that comes to you is a gift, not an entitlement. Listen, somebody may give you something free. It doesn't mean that's an entitlement. Entitlement says you deserve it. You and I don't deserve nothing. Nothing. 
And when we think that we deserve something, there's a spirit behind that. Amen? And we've got to come out of that. That was not Christ-like. Amen? Jesus came to give, not to take. You were rescued to give, not to take. The word says, sow and you'll reap. Give and it'll be given unto you. Hello. Does everybody get it? So there is a law of sowing and reaping too, isn't there? Not sowing and stealing. Sowing and reaping. Is everybody okay? First Kings 19. And feeds the ego of evil presence. Feeds the what? Ego of evil presence. First Kings 19. Oh, hallelujah. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. In verse 15. Now the Lord said to Elijah, not Shah, Jah. Verse 15. He said, go. I know it says him, but I'm telling you who he's talking to. It says, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint, in other words, pour oil on it, because God's making a point of contact. He's going to empower him. Hazel as king of Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nishma, as king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Malaho, who shall anoint you shall anoint as the prophet in your place. So God was getting ready to replace him. Amen? All right. And it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill. So God was setting up something so people could not escape. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel whose knees have not bowed to the demonic force and false deity of Baal. And every mouth that has not kissed him, sounds like the Pope to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, he wears the same hat, I think. <laughs> Hallelujah. And verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who was, now are you ready, plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. That means he was wealthy. He was wealthy. His family had a business that was making money. And he was with the 12. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle. That mantle represented anointing. In other words, when God calls you, he throws, he draws you. The anointing draws you. So you got Elijah, Elijah, Shishka. Elijah, that was the prophet of the Lord, who sees Elisha. He throws his mantle on him. He's over there plowing. Wealthy family, not lacking nothing. But the Lord's calling him. Did the Lord call you? Amen. And he throws his mantle on him, and, and verse 20, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and my mother. Soulish flesh creature. And then I will follow you. He wanted to go back to the family. Now watch the response. And he said to him, Go back again. What have I done to you to cause you to want to go back? Elijah got it. He says, man, you're right. I can't go back to my family. I've just entered another family. I've been called into eternal family, not a temporary one. Man, when the Lord called me, 
I thanked him for my parents, but they were no longer my parents. My brother was no longer my brother. My sisters, all, I, I no, no longer had a family anymore. My family was the ones that were sent from God into this world to serve God, called out of darkness, unplugged. That was my family now. Not that I didn't dishonor my family, but I realized my true mother and father was the creator. And my true brothers and sisters were the ones that were doing the will of God. I no longer had a family, and I no longer had friends. I got a new family. And so here's what Elijah did. He got understanding right away. He said, whoa, you're right. I can't go back. Why? Because he was trying to kill all the emotional attachments. See, that's one of the things. Remember, this is where people are always ensnared by emotion. Emotion. And that's how demons get fed, by wrong emotions. Jealousy, rage, anger, hatred, all of these things, lust. Amen? Fear, anxiety, stress. All of these things demonic spirits get fed by. The emotions that you and I should be releasing is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Amen? And he got it. So Elijah turned back from him and took the yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He said, man, I'm going to make sure I ain't going back. I'm going to destroy what was supplying me. In other words, the business was supplying him. No longer was I going to allow anything to supply me, but my, prov my provision comes from above. I'm going to totally trust God to provide for me and direct my path. So he killed and slaughtered the oxen and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people. So he even you destroyed the plow and everything was it, used it to burn and kill the oxen so he could cook the oxen and gave it to everyone. In other words, he totally destroyed everything from his past. Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? And then he arose and did what? Followed Elijah and became his servant underneath a mentor. Does everybody got it? A guardian. And he followed him all the way to where finally Elijah was taken up to heaven and Elisha received the mantle and the double portion anointing. See, it's the anointing that constantly continues to break your past. But you remember the Holy Spirit, who is the anointing, will guide you to all truth. What God is trying to do is cut us loose from everything, entanglements. Remember the word says, how can a soldier be entangled in the affairs of this world? He will not win the battles. He will lose them. We are to continue to deny our life and take the life of Christ to receive and maintain the anointing. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. First John chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Did you get that? First John chapter 2 and verse 15. Let's speak it. Do not what? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, the desires. But he who does the will of God, what? Amen. Abides forever. Wow. Amen. So he who does not do the will of God ain't abiding forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, have come as pastors, evangelists, and all kinds of things. False prophets, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. They're not telling people the truth. They're emotional speakers, and they're misleading individuals, not exposing the unseen influence. Even now many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Why? Because they could not deny themselves. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from who? And you do, and you what? 
and you know all things. Oh, praise God, if you're walking in the anointing. I've not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies Jesus is the Christ? And he is antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you've heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. This is the promise that he has promised me and you, eternal life. These things I've written to you concerning those who what? Try to deceive you. That's where it talks about itchy ears in the latter days. That's where the word talks about in the last days, there'll be doctrines of demons seducing and seducting spirits. But you have the anointing which, ha but, uh, the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone should teach you. Why? Because your Holy Spirit should be teaching you. But as, some, uh, as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Without the anointing, we are not victorious. We're not victorious. You'll try to go in your own strength, your own ability, and your own talents. You'll try to do it in your own time. You'll cross over the boundaries, and you'll feel self-entitled. And you won't earn the trust of God. Acts 1. Acts chapter 1. And verse 4. The spirit of narcissism. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And being assembled with them, Jesus... Commanded them, everyone say commanded. commanded. Not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now he told us to 500 disciples and only 120 of them obeyed. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Well, they were still carnal. They weren't looking at anything else but carnal, natural things. And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. In other words, they couldn't get it anyways. That's why he told them, look, I got a lot of things to tell you, but you ain't going to get it until you get filled with the Holy Spirit. But you shall receive what? You shall receive the anointing when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. Does a witness lie? Does a witness cheat? Does a witness feel self-entitled? No. Does a witness trust God? Amen. Is a witness willing to endure? Amen. Is he willing to wait? Amen. That's a witness of what? The anointing. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4.25. Therefore what? Putting away what? Lying. Let each of you speak truth. With his neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin, and don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. He warns us about giving place to the devil. Why? Because it will interfere with the anointing. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, that it is good that he may have something to give to him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? 
Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Now, he tells us, look it, don't make place for the devil. Why? Because you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit. That's simple. Let all bitterness. Remember, the unmasking was the exposed bitterness. That's what he's still doing. He's exposing bitterness. Rebellion. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave me and you. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? You'll lose the anointing. Isaiah 63. In verse 7, is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he has bestowed on them according to his mercies according to the multitude of his loving kindness. For he, he said, surely they are my people. <clears throat> Children who will not, what? Lie. So he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bore them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and did what? grieved his Holy Spirit, so he what? He turned himself against them as an enemy, and he fought against them. Whoa. Grieving the Holy Spirit. What he's talking about is, man, when we grieve that, in other words, when we make place for the devil and grieve the Holy, because it grieves the Holy Spirit, that presence and the anointing lifts. And what happens is every demonic spirit wants to access you and battle against you. Again, the first spirits that begin to show up is familiar. And they promote emotion and emotion and reattach emotional attachments. First thing you're thinking is everything of your past. You're thinking about all of the people. You're thinking about what you lost, what you gained, what's this, what's that. Your mind is all over the place now. Why? Because it's all connecting to you. The self-man. The false deity of me, myself, and I. We do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit. We do not want to make place for the devil. We do not want to lie. We want to be witnesses. See, what you may do in front of people may be different than what you do with other people. Amen? But God sees it all. And what you approve of, you'll be judged by also. So if you approve of lies and deception under the guidelines and the rules that God has placed us under, you'll be judged the same way. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You know, when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we said, I gave up my life. I think some people don't th still think it's a joke. They think that, you know, oh, I accept Jesus. He knows my heart. I just go do what I want. Never be a soldier. Never be a witness. Always entangled in, in cycles. Be offended easily. Bitter. Can't take counsel, correction, or direction. Verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Is everybody there? Amen. However, we speak wisdom. Everyone say wisdom. Wisdom. Among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. This wisdom is from above. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. He says, if you love me, you will obey me. But God has revealed them to us through his what? 
his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the Spirit of God. That's why it's important to have relationship in the Spirit. That's why it's important to be filled with the Spirit. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. In other words, He's got things waiting for me and you. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the carnal man, the natural man, the old man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Let me share with you that one of the things about this Spirit that I was talking about, amen, one of the things he gets you, gets an individual, is into the natural state. He moves them out of the spiritual state. Listen. We were a body with a spirit. When you are born again, you are a spirit with a body. Does everybody get it? It's different now. But the, what the enemy tries to do is get you back to a body with a spirit. Does everybody understand that? So that your body, your natural, is always first. Instead of the spirit being first. So that you can't deny yourself and you can't fulfill the perfect law of the spirit of life and freedom. Listen, the devil is, will outwit me and you easily. It's the anointing that outwits the devil. You can have all the words you want. But if that word is not alive to you and it's not backed by the anointing, you're going to get outwitted every time. Because you cannot live out of the word of God without the anointing. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. I want to do 14 again. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Let me tell you, when you're filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're, you, it's our responsibility to keep activated the mind of Christ. That's our responsibility. Romans 8, verse 12. Romans 8, 12. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. In other words, if you're living according to yourself, if you can't deny yourself, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are called what? Sons of God. For if you're not being led by the Spirit of God, you're called son of a devil. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy, because there's relationship. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the, uh, for the creation was subjected in fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. That's... That's what's waiting. That's what's coming. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we are who also 
who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance or patience or endurance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we don't know what we ought to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or understood. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the what? The will of God. And we know that all things work together to, for good to those who what? Love God. That means there's got to be an area of obedience to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Wow. I want to close at Mark 16. The spirit of narcissism or narcissistic. It's rampant. It's all over. It's global. You see it everywhere. Believers have been in, infected with the spirit, living out of the soul instead of the spirit, living out of emotion instead of the spirit. Is everybody okay? Mark 16, is everybody there? 16, 16, please. Hallelujah. Mark 16, 16. What's the word believe mean? Follow. Follow. Well, you can't follow unless you what? Deny yourself. And you can't fight unless you deny yourself. So people don't fight because they can't deny themselves. So the enemy gets them into a place where they're not willing to deny themselves. And they want God to fix everything and he ain't gonna. He said, I gave you power and authority and I gave you dominion over the earth and all demonic forces. Oh Lord, why didn't you answer me? I did. You didn't hear me and you missed it. And you fell into the trap. He who follows, he who believes and is baptized will be what? Saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. So he who is not going to follow is going to be condemned. And these signs will follow those who follow me. In my name they will what? Why does he have cast out demons? Because you're to drive these evil spirits out of your presence. So that the presence of God can take over. It's our responsibility to remove demonic forces out to allow the presence of God in. That's why we worship. If you can't worship, those demons are going in you. And you find yourself struggle even more if you're not a worshiper because they're looking for a place to go to. Because re rebellion is witchcraft. And witchcraft draws demonic activity. These signs will follow those who believe in my name. They'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They will take up serpents. Now serpents are carriers of demons. I love cutting their heads off. I chase them too. I look for them. Man. If I could kill every snake. I watch on the news and like these pythons that they're finding in, uh, down south. And they're, they're saving them. I'm like, man. <laughs> Cut that head off. Kill those things. Carriers of demonic forces. That's amazing to me. People have snake pets when they're the most cursed animal on the earth. And they pet them. The last time we tried to pet one, my wife tried to. The thing turned into a frozen ball. Yeah. She didn't know. We just, got re we just got back together again. And we went to an old friend's house. And there was a snake in the aquarium. 
And I forgot what kind of snake it was, but he used to feed it mice. And so she's going, oh, that's pretty. I'm thinking, oh, no, don't do this. <laughs> and she's walking. She didn't know anything yet, you know. She wasn't listening. Oh, no, don't touch that thing. Let's just kill it. Of course, it was my friend's snake. And we just, you know, anyway. So he hadn't seen me in a while and whatever, and so we went over there and said hello. And so, I, I, so she's gonna, he's going to pull the snake out, put it over his neck, and he's got it around him. And this thing is, I don't know, six foot long or whatever, and big and thick. Huh? And then, uh, uh, and I started binding that spirit because I know there's demons in that thing. I'm binding it. So when he put it, he was going to put it around her, this thing whoosh, turned into a ball, froze. He said, what did you do to my snake? I I didn't do nothing. I thought, yes. The anointing power of the Holy Spirit. And that thing was frozen stiff like a, man, you thought it was, it was heavy. It became like glass. He didn't know what to do. He freaked out. He put it back in his aquarium. He's got a room in his back that he's a bedroom just for the snake. He releases um, mice in there and he lets the snake eat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then I have other experiences of snakes. So I, we went home and we were like, whoa. So I called him up. I said, hey. He said, ma'am, that snake still ain't unwound yet. Praise God, I hope it dies. <laughs> you know? And then I guess they went to bed, the thing was still frozen. Getting up the next day, it was opened up. You know? But that's why it says we'll take up serpents. Those are snakes, too. And, and, and we'll drink anything deadly. Now, it, it, it doesn't mean you're going to go siphon a gas, amen? Or drink cyanide. You're going to die being stupid. You know? It means if you drink something, that's why the word says, bless your food and bless your drinks. Why? You're protected. Amen? You ain't going to die. Praise God. And it will by no means hurt them. And you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Praise God. This is the power and authority and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling you, these demonic forces are deceiving the people of God. And there's, it's an emotional living now. And we got to come out of that and break that and live the life of Christ and not the life of self. And you got to come against this spirit because it's overtaking everything. Amen? Listen, the Lord always tells us things, doesn't he? He exposes things. He just exposes the spirit because this is the number one attacking spirit, narcissism. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that this word be imparted, the seed be imparted in us in every part of our being. Don't let nothing steal it, Lord. Protect it by the blood of Jesus. As we bind, blind, mute, and deaf that spirit of narcissism that has attacked anyone in this room and that has attacked the body of Christ and attacked this country. We cast them and remove them from this place, from these people, and from this ministry, and from our neighborhood and from this country in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. <laughs>